Thank you everybody so much for joining us today. Um, we have a really great webinar for you, Maximizing Revenue with Sugar Cell and Sugar Market, an AI-powered approach. So really excited about this topic. Um, we have some awesome key speakers here. Just to start off, I'm gonna be hosting everything. My name's Jenna Carrillo. I'm a customer success manager at BrainCell. And then um, next to me, I do have the VP of customer experience here at Hogan. And then also joining us from Sugar CRM is John Zilch, and who is the senior product manager. So welcome, Garrett and John. Welcome, great to be hey, here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Awesome, okay, so I guess to kick us off, um, I'd like to start with a couple housekeeping items. So um, this will, we're gonna have about a 45 minute presentation with a Q&A at the end. So you should see um, a questions box um, off to the side of your screen here. So please feel free to drop any questions during this event into that box. And Karsten, who's in our marketing department, is actually working in the background, going to be monitoring them. So um, we'll be answering all the questions that you drop during our Q&A. And then finally, this is going to be recorded. So we'll send over that Recording tomorrow morning um, to all of you registrants. Feel free to pass it along to any of your teammates, colleagues who weren't able to join us today. Um, so just to kind of kick off the fun, we're going to launch a poll. So we're focusing on Sugar Market, uh, Sugar's marketing automation system. So we'd like to know, um, do you currently use a marketing automation system? And drop your answers. We'll hold this for a few. I put those answers in. Okay, great. So thanks everybody for dropping those answers. Um, and yeah, let's let's just kind of hop right into it, I guess. Um, Garrett, take it away. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about Sugar Market. Thanks everybody for being here or watching this recording. Um, just a couple of things to start off. When you talk about Sugar Market, talking about a robust marketing automation platform, right? And some of the ways that people, organizations are using this platform are obviously not only to create robust pinpoint marketing campaigns, email sequences and the like, but, but really to engage with your customers in a personalized experience. Uh, and the question is kind of how do you get there? And you get there through very robust reporting with artificial intelligence to support. So John's gonna talk a little bit more about that as he gets deeper into the demo. Um, but connecting your marketing automation platform to your CRM, connecting it to your website, you know, funneling lead traffic through your website directly to your sales reps as a result, analyzing your CRM data and putting customers and prospects in very specific campaigns um, specifically designed for, for to market to that particular use case. Those are some of the high level benefits that Sugar Market can provide. And again, if you're an existing Sugar CRM customer, or even if you're not, um, really Sugar Market is robust enough to talk to any existing sales tool out there on the marketplace. Once you start collecting the data, from your campaigns, uh, from your, your lead gen, and using this robust reporting capability, then you can really start to predict what your customers want and what they want to do next. So it's really exciting to get into it. It's a lot of A-B testing for your environment. It's a lot of you know questioning and answering, um, but we've seen tremendous benefits of adopting Sugar Market in our customer base, uh, nothing but significant growth as a result of the effort. Next slide. And then again, what's the benefit of adopting a marketing automation tool um, that's connected to your sales tool, right? Sugar CRM, for example. Um, again, if it's connected to your website and we wanna flow leads directly through to the CRM and notify sales reps, we're gonna be able to do that. Get on the phone quickly, engage with that prospect and close that deal. Uh, again, as we are collecting more data in our CRM, we want to take that data and analyze it from the marketing side 
we don't want the marketing team switching between the CRM and, and the marketing tool. They, they want to be able to go to one place, marketing automation, sugar market, analyze all that CRM data, and then assign specific targeted prospects and customers to very specific campaigns for maximum ROI. Um, finally, of course, staying in communication with your existing customers, knowing what products and services you may be growing into, you know, education of those existing customers on what you're doing as a business, where they could benefit from continuing to work with you in that relationship, that's all going to improve your customer retention. Uh, and it's all going to improve ultimately what we call the customer experience for your customers. So a little bit of a high level business benefits and what is sugar market and how are people using it today? Again, we'll get much deeper into it as we as we hand it over to John for the demo. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you, Garrett. All great points on the benefits of Sugar Market. So um, now let's see Sugar Market in action. I'm going to pass it off to John and dive right in. Thanks so much. Excited to uh, dive into this. So just um, uh, thanks for having me, Brain Cell Team, uh, Jenna Garrett. Appreciate it. Um, and excited to show show off a little bit of the product today and how it can do some of the things that Garrett just mentioned, right? Connecting the sales and marketing groups together. Uh, before we go into the story of the demo, just a little bit about myself personally. Uh, I've been in product management for several years, but before that, and I think this is relevant to today's demo, uh, I was in business operations and the two teams we supported were sales and marketing. Uh, I was at Intuit at the time. And it was really interesting. I mean, at, at, you know, this is going back a few years now, but those two teams struggled to know what the other ones were doing and how they could work together. And Garrett mentioned connecting the two teams. I was literally trying to connect those two teams, sometimes just telling them, hey, we're all on the same side here. Uh, we're all going after the same thing, which is, is positive, um, you know, commercial goals that the company has. How can we work together to do that? And I think back then, uh, the world of sales marketing was a little bit different. In some places, it felt more like a relay race, right? Or someone taking the baton and handing it to the next team. You find a, a, a prospect or a lead, you convert that lead or marketing qualifies that lead, sends it over to a BDR, the sales team, the sales team then takes it from there. And sometimes you don't even get the visibility back as to what happened. The world's changed a lot, I think for the better. And I think software, right? Especially in the space that we're in in Sugar, has to reflect that. It has to support this new world of we're going to collaborate together. Marketing is going to help this sale the whole way through, right? The whole way through that funnel, if that's what you're using, or the whole through way through the pipeline. And, and sales as well. Sales might be brought in earlier. So when we think about Sugar as a platform, we're really thinking about how those two teams can bring their expertise to, um, uh, to really uh, pursuing that commercial goal. And I hope you can see that today in, the, in some of the functionality we demo for you. Uh, so with that, why don't we jump right into it and I will uh, share my screen. Um, actually, sorry, on the slide you're seeing, we're gonna be a, an apparel company today. So um, obviously FIFA World Cup, the Women's World Cup was all the rage over the summer, uh, very exciting stuff. And uh, for the sake of the demo, we're gonna be selling apparel to um, different businesses here. Um, and our, our situation is going to be uh, trying to drive revenue, right? We're halfway through September, uh, assuming the quarter ends in September, right? Are there any opportunities for us to pursue pipeline and uh, maybe convert some leads at the last minute here and make some money? So let's figure out a couple ways to do that. Uh, this is the hardest part for me is figuring out how to share my screen. Let me know when you can see it. Yep. Yeah. All right. You. All right, great. Uh, so I'm going to toggle a little bit between the sugar cell product and the sugar market product. And that's obviously on purpose because, again, we look at this as one platform where both teams can work together to be successful. Um, and I'm going to start off in, in sugar market, actually. Let's just say that we have a web page set up, right, very similar to what you just saw on the screen, uh, where we're just we're attracting web visitors, right, maybe through paid advertising, whatever it might be. We're bringing people into our site. They're filling out this form, and that's how we're capturing leads. Maybe those leads have been there for a while. The marketing team is doing what they typically do to qualify the leads, make sure that they uh, fit certain criteria, or if we've seen patterns in their behavior that would warrant giving those leads over to a, a sales team, maybe even a business development team um, in the CRM. Uh, so now, as I promised, right, we've got a sales team that is tasked with looking at those leads, evaluating those leads, uh, nurturing those leads, and, and eventually, uh, uh, you know, optimistically turning them into pipeline or opportunities. But 
we're past the relay race days, right? There's no passing of the baton. Marketing can still help in all of that, especially when there isn't a lot of engagement going on with some of these leads. Uh, and sales, you know, back in the day may have turned them back to marketing and said, these are no good. Well, why do that? Why not give it another chance? Why not try other things to try and further nurture the leads and bring in more pipeline? So let's let's think about different ways we can do that in sugar market. One of my favorite ways to uh, to to look at that um, is through our nurture. Uh, sorry, through our nurture technology that we have right within sugar market. So in nurtures, if you're not familiar, it's kind of a customer journey super flexible there's all sorts of different ways you can drag and drop different conditions and actions into a nurture to make it real so in this case we're going to start with this right so we've got leads that are sitting in the cell product and the marketing team wants to create some automation behind the scenes that can um, further qualify some of these leads and move them along in their uh, decision making process so i opened up a nurture right i've already created it and i'll walk you through it just to, for the sake of time um, but there's, you know, it's, it's on the simpler side and you can make these as complex or as simple as you want. And a lot of our customers do. And you can see over here on the left, different actions that you can have, right? So if conditions are met, which are these yellow diamonds at the bottom, you can push them to the next action. And everything from creating a task in CRM to alerting certain people, to removing them from lists, to even moving them to another nurture, right? Which could be a little more sophisticated if you're, if you're new to this, but just goes to show you the extent to which we have different options for you to build your customer journeys here. The very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send them an email, right? So I'm gonna, and we're gonna talk about which leads are getting this email in a second. But I've got a, a, an email here that I've already built ahead of time, but I'm gonna show you what it is. And it's basically saying, hey, do you have any interest you wanna meet with us? We'd love to talk to you. It's end of the quarter. Sounds like you might be interested in our apparel. That's great. Remember, they came to the page. Finding the right apparel at the right price is a challenge, but we've been doing this for years, right? And frankly, all they need to do is click on this I'm interested button, and it could bring them to a form or it could bring them to some other experience. But essentially, we're not even going to care about what comes after that. As soon as we find out that they clicked on that button, we know that there's some interest, there's some semblance of interest there that's been generated and we can work with that, which is really important, okay? Uh, so now I'm gonna go back to my nurture. I'm gonna say okay to that. I'm gonna leave my email open for a second, but you can see I've got these different criteria, right? So if they clicked on that link again, I am going to uh, direct them uh, on a positive event, right? They did click on that event to now create a task in the CRM. So the BDR may have been, you know, not as interested in this lead, or maybe maybe they weren't getting a lot of traction, but for whatever reason, we sent an email. That lead was interested. Maybe that was the right engagement mechanism. They clicked on that link. We're creating a task. In this case, we're going to give it to Melissa Evans. That's probably our BDR, maybe even a sales rep for that region, and say, go follow through with this lead. There's something there. Um, and if they haven't, right, so let's, let's pretend that they, they didn't click on that link. We don't have to end it there. We could take one more shot at it. We can wait, as you could probably tell from the clock icon. We're going to wait a couple days, and then we're going to send a second email and say, and we've all gotten these, right? Hey, stranger, or I guess you're not interested, or whatever it might be. Um, you, you're all probably much more creative than myself. You'll come up with something that's really relevant um, to those folks and asking them to re-engage. But the important piece here is we've got positive a positive signal back in that they clicked on that link, and we can now do something. So now I want to show you something that's really cool, right? Because we could send our whole database through there, but that really, that wouldn't be very personalized, right? And that wouldn't be very good marketing either. It would almost seem like spam, right? If we're doing that in a very careless way. So how can we be more intentional and purposeful around the marketing um, strategy that we're employing here? And this is one of my favorite parts about our Sugar platform. I've got a report. Now I'm toggling back over to Sugar Cell, right? Um, and I'm in a demo environment, so sorry if not all the data looks exactly as it should, uh, or, or not super realistic, but bear with me. Um, and I've got reports, and these are just your out-of-the-box reports um, or custom reports that um, you can build or, or come with Sugar Cell, right? So there's nothing uh, super exotic about these reports. It's really how they're utilized across the platform that makes it interesting. And I've built a report called High Potential Leads. And it's got nine people on it, 
right? And the criteria for that report is anyone that has a lead score that's over 30. For whatever reason, right? Maybe our prediction that we have built into Sugar, whatever it is, tells us that a score over 30 means not a lost cause. We can actually do something with this lead, but there hasn't been a whole lot of momentum with the lead. We'd love to convert it to an opportunity. So in this case, again, using demo data, we've only got nine leads that are part of it. Here's the beauty is we can actually build inside Sugar Market a dynamic distribution list that's going to pull those nine leads. And as you could probably tell from the name uh, dynamic distribution list, I'm going to leave the nurture for a second. It's a living, breathing thing, right? If somebody else was to score over a 30 and get sent over to the sell product, that person is now going to be added on the list. And I'm using really simple use cases here. You could have an industry segmentation or filter on that report. You might want to exclude your competitors. You probably want to exclude your competitors. You probably want to, you might want to exclude any uh, one or two person business, right? Uh, if they're not of a certain size and don't, don't fit your ideal customer profile. Again, the flexibility is really um, part of our sweet spot with the Sugar platform and that you can build this however you'd like. I'm going to create a new distribution list. And if I, I could just go ahead with a static distribution list, maybe it's folks I'm bringing over from another system, whatever it might be. But what we want to do today is a dynamic distribution list. I'm going to call it, um, let's call it high quality lead, something like that. Put it in my regular folder. Okay, now it needs to access that report, so this is important. I'm just being as secure as we are and making sure that people can't misuse the report on the other side. We ask people to log in, right, or, or actually put in credentials rather, so that we can confirm that they have the rights to that report. And now I'm off and running. So I've still got my list here, high quality leads, but I'm gonna make sure I don't do this too quickly. Here's it's asking for a report. And I only have four reports that tie to contacts or leads right now. If I had 100, I'd see 100 here. Um, but luckily, I only have four, so easy to kind of go through here. And we're just looking at the report, high potential leads. Those are my nine people. So what's really neat, right, is you could have someone who's making segmentation decisions from CRM experience, from the CRM data, which, again, is where your pipeline is, right? It's where your opportunities live. It's where your marketing qualified leads, maybe even sales qualified leads, now live. And, and you don't have to export them and import them into market or try to find them in, the, in a different way in market. You can actually pick that up right here. Um, if I wanted to, I could put a description in here. Uh, I could put it in you know, my folder, as I mentioned before. Uh, and then what I really love about this is I can have the auto update turned on so that it's gonna automatically sync. And that sync will you know, happen on an hourly basis. So that again, if anyone else was to score, um, and I think it's syncing now, so it's, oh, I'm gonna save this, sorry. So now I can auto update and I can click this sync now and it's gonna churn through. Um, first time it's doing it, so it might take a little bit, but it's gonna go and it's gonna eventually find those nine contacts and it's gonna add them to this dynamic distribution list. And I'll say it one more time, if somebody was to fall off or be added to it, um, the automation would automatically pick that up and I could bring it into that nurture. So let me shift back over to the nurture we were just in. And I've built it all out, right? So let's, let's say that everything here looks good. I'm gonna go into recipients. And here is where I could pick my distribution lists. I could also have picked you know, other um, segmentation options, but I'm gonna pick my dynamic distribution list and you see here high quality leads. I already did it before, but let me do it again here. I can drag and drop that into uh, my include section. If I wanted to, I could also pick a suppression list and maybe exclude, um, you know, competitors or or some partners or someone that I don't really want to market to in the same way. I could exclude those from this nurture, meaning they'll never enter, right? But those nine people are going to enter that nurture as soon as I hit next, save, and publish. And then anyone who was to jump onto that report based on the criteria will also be added to this nurture. So all of that's happening behind the scenes. And as your sales staff is spending their time and their resources talking to the high value clients, maybe trying to close pipeline, you've now got a system working as you sleep 
um, through this nurture automation, this customer journey automation, to continue to um, engage with these high quality leads, which is really neat. Uh, yeah. One other thing about the nurture. Go ahead, uh, Garrett. No, no, keep going. I want to show you one other thing about this email. That we actually released about a year and a half ago and um, can, can further help with what we're trying to do here, right? Which is get folks to click on this button, which gets you know the task created um, and everything kind of takes off from there. I've got text at the top that just, you know, I, I created again, very vanilla hey, you might be interested in our stuff, and that's fine. But maybe I want to personalize it even more. This is something else Garrett just mentioned before. How do I, how do I make this almost feel like a one-to-one -one conversation? We have segmentation um, within Sugar Market, which is its own um, element that you can build and say, I want to define different segments based on this criteria. I've only done two. I've done sales and operations. And that's all depending on the department that came over from Sugar Cell. So if I know that a certain lead is in sales, I'm going to show them this. Are you looking to sell incredible athletic clothing at the right price? We can help. If they're in operations, they're going to get a different email. They're going to say, as an operations, it's going to say, as an operations professional, never been harder to find the right apparel at the right price. But we got you. Let's chat, and we can find the right fit. Again, I'm creating really. Uh, you know, baseline stuff here, um, you'll all be much more creative than myself, but you get the idea. You can make that as dynamic as you want. You can create as many segments as you'd like to uh, to personalize this. And it doesn't have to be just text. You could have the button look different. You could have that image down below uh, seem different as well. And then of course, you can also have just default text for anyone who might not have um, one of those two values in the department field uh, as kind of your, your catch-all. Um, so again, trying to bridge that gap between a CRM and, and marketing automation. We don't look at the world that way at Sugar. We look at it as it's one platform and you've got your teams that are set out to uh, accomplish what you know their, their job descriptions uh, um, entail, but we wanna make it easier, right? By relying on uh, collaborative effort between teams. Uh, one more thing to show you, and now I'm gonna flip back over to the sell side. So we talked a little bit about how we can use sell data within market, Let's flip it around. I'm gonna go into a lead. I think Margaret is my best bet. I think she's got some engagement here. Margaret Arnold. And now let's let's change our our scenario a bit, right? So now maybe I'm a seller and um, or a BDR or what have you. And uh, Margaret Arnold is one of the leads that I'm assigned and I want to work with Margaret. I want to figure out what's the best way um, to move her along in the sales cycle. So, um, you know, I've got all my my features here for the seller. You can see it if you're familiar with Sugar Cell. It's all here. I can also convert this lead when ready. But what's really neat and something that we've worked hard on. In fact, that we just had a, a product release recently that um, evolved this this functionality even more. So we have a Sugar Market button. And when I click that, it's actually porting over the same experience you would see in Sugar Market within the CRM. And I used to get this question all the time from the sellers. Please tell me the email campaigns that are going out to my customers. Please tell me what they've been invited to. Which webinars are they attending? Which, what, you know, what's happening social with social media? Um, and I'd have to go look it up, right? And I was kind of the, the person stuck in the middle between sales and marketing. It's all here now. And not only can you gain visibility into the marketing activity uh, for a given lead, you can actually, um, you can actually uh, uh, order or um, manipulate kind of what that journey looks like on your own, right? As long as it's marketing approved. And I'm gonna show you that in a second. But the first thing is the journey, right? So this is the same view you would see if I was over in Sugar Market for Margaret, and you can, filter this down by all sorts of different activity types. Did Margaret come to one of our web pages? Um, did she receive an email? Did she click through on an email, right? Has she unsubscribed? Uh, form submissions, was there a webinar that maybe um, Margaret registered for or even attended, hopefully? Uh, or social media, right, in which Margaret engaged with that. So you can look at everything or just uh, certain things depending on what you're looking for. 
and just scroll through these, right? So you get a, a full picture of how Margaret has engaged with your company and your marketing efforts. You can also see which lists Margaret has been a part of. And we just went through nurtures a minute ago. Same idea here, right? Here are the nurtures that Margaret has been a part of. She hasn't been part of the high quality leads when we built, but the fall apparel upsell, Margaret was um, included in, right? And that one was published. And now maybe we've got a nurture that's all about inviting people to a webinar, right? Maybe it's an educational, informative webinar that we're, we're putting on for customers or for leads or what have you. Um, as the seller, as I mentioned, you can now ask that Margaret be part of that nurture, right? Just by filling this out. Now, she's already been to this one, so I probably wouldn't pick it, but it's the only one published, so I'll, I'll just pick it for now. Not only can you drop Margaret into that customer journey nurture, um, but you can also drop her in a certain points along the journey, right? So maybe she gets the, the, the email, the report, maybe it's further down in the journey, Maybe you just wanted to get that invite to the webinar directly. Whatever it might be, as the seller, you're empowered to make those decisions now. Now, a lot of this is predicated on having the right permissions in market, as you'd expect. We don't want to just open up to the world. Um, but if the sellers and marketers can, uh, can set that up accordingly, you're off and running. No scoring here on Margaret, although typically there would be. And then I really love this piece as well. Uh, there's an email feature. And uh, I can just send a quick email right through here if I want to as the seller. But what I think is really cool is I can also pick something that was pre-built from the marketing team and insert that in. Now you're seeing a lot of demo data here, but pretend this is marketing material, marketing assets that the marketing team has created. I can go in here, I have something to start with. Maybe I wanna personalize it. Hey, hey Margaret, how you doing? Heard the weather's bad in your area. You know, whatever it might be. Um, I remember the last time we chatted, it's been a while. You can add your personalization to it, but you also have this great information, the links, everything set up for you to save you time and, and get you moving. So, yeah. Um, I, I yeah. Over here at Brain Cell, John, we, uh, of course, are using Sugar CRM and Sugar Market hand in hand. And, and I'm pulling information about Brain Cell all the time using that feature. It's nice, polished HTML um that's uh informative and um, if i'm talking to a prospect and they want some more information about it a couple of clicks and i get it out the door in a nice polished way so absolutely love that feature cool thanks for sharing yeah it's good to hear it's working for you in the in the team as well hey great hey john thank you so much um great way to showcase the possibilities of sugar market here oh were you not done <laughs> no, and I'm sorry, I, I, I did not, uh, I, I, didn't, I, don't, I didn't hit my cue there, but uh, yeah, so I think we're gonna, we're gonna shift to roadmap, which is a question I get a lot in the product side is, okay, that's all the product today. By the way, that was our live product. That isn't, you know, a beta version or anything like that. That's, that all exists with the, the sugar cell and the sugar market product um, today. But a lot of people ask me what's coming. So Jen, I don't know, do we want to go into some roadmap stuff? I don't know how we're doing on time. We're doing great. Yeah, go for it. Awesome. Yeah, so uh, you know, work really hard here to understand what's important to our customers, as you'd expect from any product management team. Um, and and when I joined Sugar about uh, a year and a half ago or so, uh, we sat down and thought about well, thematically, you know, what are our customers asking for, and where should we be focused? Where should we invest our time and our our resources? Um, and we whittled it down to five major categories. I'll start with the bottom because I think it's probably um, what do they call it, table stakes or so, but the product obviously has to be reliable, has to be stable and performant, right? It has to work as you'd expect. And that's really important to us. And, um, you know, every dev cycle that we have includes some of that, make sure it's secure. We're keeping up with our standards uh, around security and performance and everything else. Um, but beyond that, we're also thinking about quality in, in other ways. One, intuitiveness. So when you log into Sugar Market, when you log into Sugar Cell, we want it to be as intuitive. We want it to just flow um, and, and really create no you know, friction for, for our customers around using the product. Things should just make sense. The next, I, I think, was probably the focus of the demo that we just went through. How do we make it collaborative? How do we make sure that multiple teams within an organization can work together to achieve the goals that they want to achieve? Um, and that, that's one we, we invest a whole lot in. 
time-saving tools, that's that's really our catch-all for anytime you're in automation business, whether it's Salesforce automation or marketing automation, it's got to save people time. It's got to be efficient. So we think about that a lot in what we're uh, investing in. And then lastly, data intelligence, whether that's with our AI models, um, whether that's, be, you know, making sure the right data is accessible so you can personalize the experience for uh, your customers. Um, data intelligence is something also, or, or just providing the right analytics so you can validate the value that we're bringing uh, through the Sugar platform. Uh, data intelligence is, is very important to us as well. Probably go to the next slide. So those were the themes. And now, um, yeah, thank you. Uh, now we'll talk about what that means for the actual product. How will the product change based on those themes? The market CRM experience was something that we've done a lot of work on already. So you saw the uh, the sugar market journey view that we ended the demo with. That was a big part of our efforts. Um, you can see at the bottom too, just improving how the data is shared between our products, um, what teams can access it, what data is more relevant, most relevant, how do you search for things? Um, a series of improvements to make sure that we're thinking of this on a platform level. Um, so that's, that's the first and the last on the list. In terms of just pure capabilities and features, uh, it, we are currently working on conditional formatting and that's for forms. So if you're building a form and you're asking someone what country they're from and they say Canada, you probably don't wanna ask them their US state that they're from, right? You wanna ask them which province uh, to use a simple example. So we're making forms dynamic in that you can hide or show other fields depending on what they've already answered. And then preference management is the fourth thing that we're working on this quarter, um, which is, and we've all seen this probably as consumers, right? You click on manage my preferences on an email and it's not just subscribe to everything or unsubscribe, right? There's, there's a lot of middle ground. Maybe I'm interested in marketing content, but not service content or whatever it might be, right? Certain categories within a company's offering. Um, we're going to build a whole preference center so that our customers can help their customers stay more engaged and subscribe to the items that they're most interested in. And uh, we'll see that in a second. I have a little uh, snippet to kind of show everybody of what's coming. Um, first half of 2024, single sign-on. So just having one authentication model across our platform. Um, Generative uh, AI, so um, I think we've all probably been exposed to ChatGPT, and even when I was building an email before, you could probably imagine how that could help a marketer or a seller build an email and um, you know start with something based on some uh, generative AI prompts. Uh, and Zoom integration. So today we have GoToWebinar integration for events. Um, as the world has gone more remote, um, a lot of companies are doing more online events as we're doing right now. And we wanna um, support both GoToWebinar and Zoom. So Zoom is the next um, platform for webinars that we're looking to um, create a seamless integration with. And for events, we also support live events, right? Through um, lists and, and everything else. So it, it, that, that's also part of our events module. And then doing some upgrades to our form builder user experience. And that's coming too in, um, in 2024. Beyond there, oh, thank you. Uh, beyond there, uh, have some really exciting plans to make the product even more strategic than it is today for a marketing team and marketing leadership. So, um, if you think about a campaign, it's not one email, it's not one nurture. It's a series of activity. It could be landing pages, nurtures, emails, social. Um, I'm forgetting a bunch, right? Um, events, as we talked about before, even sales playbooks. And those campaigns are going to have activity tied to it, but it's also going to have a goal, right? What do we want to do in terms of bringing in pipeline or even closing deals for this, this campaign? Um, how can we help our customers set those goals and also measure against those goals? And a lot of that ties to the next thing on the list, which is attribution, right? So what content in that campaign actually gave us the most bang for our buck? And that helps marketers not only look back, but make decisions looking forward. Um, advanced analytics, so if you haven't used that, there's a BI tool that comes with Sugar Market today. It's great value, and we want to continue to evolve that as well. Uh, and then omni-channel. So there's still channels that we'd like to introduce to Sugar Market. When we looked at a nurture before, we had a series of emails, right? Imagine if instead of an email, we tried a different channel like SMS and said, well, okay, this person didn't respond to the email. Maybe they scanned or flipped past it on their phone. We're going to send them a text message instead to try to ratchet up engagement. 
something else we're working on at the moment. And then lastly, uh, in the future column, um, more around capabilities, more around data intelligence, so personalized web pages, progressive profiling with forms. Um, we do surveys today, but we'd like to do it even better and, and add more to, around the analytics of that, and then matching accounts and leads um, on the data intelligence side. Uh, and then I'll end with just two kind of teasers around some of those second half 2023 items so that you know they're they're real and they're coming. If we can go to the next slide. Um, you can see on the screen here, preference management, right? So this is the form builder that we have today. You will be able to drag and drop preferences and create as many preference pages and forms as you'd like that reflect, maybe it's by business unit, maybe it's by brand, however you want to set up your preference management you'll be able to do that in a really, really easy way. So a lot more flexibility there. And if we go to the next uh, next slide, conditional form fields, I mentioned that one as well, right? So um, on that second field, that drop down, if you answer a certain way, I don't know if you caught that, but another field made itself visible, right? So again, it's just a way to make a, the experience more engaging and more personalized for your audience. And we're excited to have this one be part of the product in, in the coming weeks. So a lot, a lot happening on our side. I, I hope you're excited by uh, some, maybe even all of this. And uh, thanks again to the Brain Cell team to for putting this together today. Yeah, of course, and, and, and letting me talk about it. <laughs> that's an aggressive uh, feature update schedule. I know we're really excited to take advantage of some of these new capabilities as they get introduced. Awesome. Cool. Well, yeah, no, again, thank you, John. This really was a great way to showcase all the possibilities that Sugar Market has. Um, and I did see some questions roll in, so let's see if we can answer some of those with the time that we have left. Um, and then as a reminder to everyone here, uh, if you do have a question that you haven't entered quite yet, you can put it in the box um, off to the side. But the first one, um, let's see that we have right here, of course, how much does Sugar Market cost? Yeah, yeah, great, great question. Um, interestingly enough, what you need to do is you need to think about how many people that you're going to be marketing to, right? So there's several factors that that are kind of get you to that cost uh, question. Um, just like every other marketing automation tool out there on the market, uh, Sugar sells its platform based on blocks of what they call active contacts. So so you, you look back at your CRM and maybe you have a million contact records, it doesn't matter. Uh, how many of those are you actively looking to market to? And then you use that number to try to understand what the costs are for how many blocks you need of active contact space um, for your subscription level. Is that it, uh, does that help, Jenna? Yeah, that helps. And you know, if we, you... Ooh. We definitely also recommend and today this comes in at usually about three days worth of effort that you work with you know someone certified in the platform to get you onboarded properly get it configured properly help you start those workflows and those nurture campaigns that you need to get that return on investment out of the gate uh, and again that effort is, is typically about you know three days worth of effort to get you up and running with the system so very quick very quick awesome yeah no garrett thank you you know, take a look at how many contacts you're actively looking to market to and reach out to us. We'd be happy to kind of drill down more on what your specific cost would be. Um, and then another one that we have right here. So does the integration between Sugar Market and Sugar Cell cost more? No, if you're a Sugar CRM customer, if you're on Cell or, or Serve and you wanna turn on Sugar Market today, it's cloud base it's flipping a light switch right and that integration is really a it's a configuration right it's just simply just aligning the new marketing capabilities from your sugar platform with your crm um, and it's all included in your standard onboard great right and I, I believe this person was probably excited to hear garrett you already answered this one but how long does it take to turn it on you said about three days is that what i picked up I mean, I always say we we this is our full time job, not yours, right? So, you know, are you going to do three straight days of working on Sugar Market? Potentially not. Uh, we'll go at your pace, but if you look at the effort, on average, it's about 24 hours of engineering time to get you where you need to be. Yeah. Awesome. Thank and you. then, 
let's see. Um, is there a limit to how many fields come over to sell? And do custom features pull over? Unlimited fields, I recall, John, I don't think there is a limitation to the number of fields being pulled in for segmentation and market. Yeah, I mean, we, we've seen, or I've seen um, hundreds. I, I'm not aware of a limit. Um, and, and if there is one, I don't, I don't think it's ever been reached. <laughs> so, um, yeah. We... All right, all right. Um, couple more. Um, so, can I use Sugar Market to manage events and webinars? Yeah, and John, if you want to take that one, events, webinar tracking. Yep. Yeah, and, and uh, I, I think I probably should have expanded on my um, description of it before. Um, Sugar Market can be really, really helpful in that. As I, you know, mentioned before, you can build that into nurtures. Um, it can help with communications, right? So you gotta get people to register, to try to you know, remind people that the webinar is coming and then to thank them after. Uh, and also use that data, right? That we, we get back from the webinar tool to help with lead scoring and to send that interaction back over to the sell product where they will see it in the customer journey view and be able to um, gain that visibility. Okay, great. And then one more for today, um, but if you do think of something after, feel free to email us. There's going to be contact information at the end, and we'll be following up. But does Sugar Market help with social, so social media? That is a great question. We use it here at, uh, at, at Green Cell. We have our Sugar Market connected to Octopost. And so for social marketing, and, I'm, and John, I'll let you chime in on this as well. Um, the account executives, the executive team, the customer success managers, even the engineers here at BrainCell are constantly taking content provided by the marketing team and spreading it across social media channels, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, to name some of the primaries that we use here at BrainCell. So this really helps us with our marketing initiatives because we're using all these social connections that we have to really spread that web of uh, insight about who we are at Brain Cell, what we're working on, what we're excited to talk about. I think it's been really effective. Awesome. All right, yeah. Well, that is it for um, the questions that I see so far, just confirming with Karsten. But um, yeah, no, thank you everybody for your questions and then joining us today. A huge thank you to John for you know showing us all of the possibilities of Sugar Market. Um, so, as a thank you for joining us, um, as you can see on the screen, we have a sweet offer for all of the registrants um, that I wanted to highlight for everyone. So with the purchase of Sugar Market, um, you'll get an additional contact block for free. So back to what Garrett was saying with that first question around cost, um, save a little bit of money by getting um, a content block for free with the purchase um, of Sugar Market from attending this webinar. We have additional savings for that as well, depending on how many contacts you need. So definitely reach out to us and let's talk about how many you're thinking um, you'll need for marketing. So we'll be following up with you tomorrow. Get your thoughts, any more questions that you have to make sure you take advantage of this sweet offer. And um, yeah, we'll be sending that recording out tomorrow too. So keep an eye out for that in your inbox. Um, thanks everyone again, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks for being on the call. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you, John. Thanks. Thank Bye. you. Take care.